In this lecture video, we will talk about the third software process model, that is, the spiral model. A risk-driven software process framework, that is, the spiral model, was proposed by Bohem. The software process here is represented as a spiral rather than a sequence of activities with backtracking or feedback between the activities. Each loop in the spiral indicated in the figure represents a phase of the software process. So you can see here, you can see the multiple loops here. You can see that the innermost loop is concerned with the requirements plan. The next loop is concerned with the development plan. The next loop of the spiral is concerned with the integration integration and test plan and so on so you can see the innermost loop might be concerned with requirements feasibility study the next loop with the requirements definition the system design the development plan the testing and so on the spiral model combines change avoidance and change tolerance it assumes that Changes are a result of project risks and includes explicit risk management activities to reduce these risks. You may also see that along with having multiple loops in the spiral, the entire spiral model is by itself split into four sectors. Let's look at each of these sectors. The first sector is here titled Objective Settings. Here, specific objectives for that particular phase of the project are defined. Constraints on the process and the product are identified and a detailed management plan is drawn up. Project risks are also identified. Alternative strategies, depending on the risks that have been identified, will be planned in this sector. This sector will be applicable to every loop of the spiral. Okay, so in the first loop, if we are talking about requirements, in this sector, you're going to determine the objectives and set the plan for requirement finding, the elicitation, the analysis, the feasibility study, and any other risks that are identified in the requirements plan phase. If there are risks, how are you going to come up with alternate strategies to combat with these risks? Let's go to the second sector, this one. This is termed as risk assessment and reduction. For each of the identified project risks, you can see that in sector one, we have identified the project risks for that particular phase. Phases are highlighted in every loop and for this particular phase, you may have identified the risks associated in this sector. Now, for every risk that you have identified in the next sector, a detailed analysis of that risk is carried out. Steps are taken to reduce or eliminate that risk. For example, if the risk is that the requirements are not appropriate, then a prototype system may be developed to check if requirements are feasible or appropriate. Let's move on to the third sector. This is called as the development and validation sector. After risk evaluation, identification and evaluation have, has happened in the first and the second sector, in the third sector of development and validation, a development model for the system is chosen. For example, if you have identified in the first two sectors that user interface development risks are, uh, you know, um, high or a priority or are dominant, then you may pick throwaway prototyping as one of your system design model. Do not worry about the terms like throwaway prototyping in this for now. If safety risks are your main concern, then you may develop based on a formal transformation model. Or if the main identified risk is 
subsystem integration, then you may use waterfall model as the best system development model. So based on the risks identified and based on alternative solutions to solve these risks, you may identify the appropriate system design that you are going to employ in order to develop this product. Let's go to the last sector of the spiral model, planning. The project is reviewed and a decision is made whether to continue a further spiral or add another spiral to the model. If it is decided to continue to add another spiral, then you have to draw up plans for the next phase of the project in the last sector. Let's revise. Understand that the specialty of spiral model proposed by Bohem is risk analysis, risk identification, risk avoidance. Okay, you can see that the entire development happens or is planned in spirals where every spiral represents one phase of the system development. You can see the innermost spiral representing the life cycle that is the requirements plan. The next uh, spiral uh, showing the development plan. The next spiral showing the integration and test plan and many more spirals can be added until and unless you decide that you do not want to plan the next phase. We've also seen how the entire model is also drawn into four sectors and what is the role or what are the tasks that are happening in each of these sectors. The main difference between the spiral model and other software process models is the explicit recognition of risk, which happens in phase two as well as in phase one. A cycle of the spiral begins by elaborating objectives here, such as performance, the functionality that is um, you know, expected from the software, alternative ways of achieving these objectives, dealing with the constraints, conditions on each of these objectives are then enumerated. Each alternative that you have identified here is assessed against the objectives defined and the sources of risks are identified in the next step that is happening here. The next step is to resolve these risks by performing some information gathering, such as maybe a more detailed analysis, building prototype models and simulating and so on. Once risks have been assessed, some development is carried out, followed by planning the next phase of the process. So what do we mean by risks? Informally, risk is something that can go wrong. For example, if your intention is to use a new programming language for development, the risk would be whether compilers are available for compiling this new programming language, whether it's compatible with what is coded in the existing languages, whether compilers available are reliable or no? Do they produce efficient object code or no? So these are the few risks if you intend to use a new programming language. So since risks lead to software changes and could lead to project problems such as schedule and cost overrun, risk minimization after identification is very important for project management. Thank you.